What's up everyone, Dabblade here with another Hunter's Guide to Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. In this video, we're going to be bringing you some 4 set budget builds, this time for the Heavy Bowgun. Now a 4 set budget build is a basic build crafted from one armor set. While it does use different weapons and talismans, it's designed to minimize farming and give you a build that is strong enough to get you through the game, through the story of Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, to the point where you can start making endgame mix sets. Now as always if you find these videos or builds helpful, please consider leaving a like on the video as well as subscribing to the channel, as I try to bring you a variety of builds for a variety of different playstyles. When it comes to the heavy bowgun, it's a very strong damage dealing weapon, but that damage output is at the cost of mobility. Also when it comes to the bowguns, you tend to want to specialise in a select few of ammunition types and capitalise on them, making them more efficient. The builds I use definitely focus on one ammo type over others, but they're also designed to counter the shortcomings of the heavy bowgun to give you comfortable builds to use. I will say the heavy bowgun though is a very skill heavy weapon, requiring a lot of skills to make work, but nonetheless these budget builds shown in this video here are definitely efficient. So the first build is the piercing full set budget build. This build is a damage focused build that focuses on piercing ammo over other types, although it can also make use of normal ammo types if you would prefer to use a different bowgun. So for this build you'll need the full S studded set which includes the S studded hat, vest, gloves, sash and sandals. For my petalace, this is Dan's personal preference but I'm using the absolute petalace for some extra health. And then for your talisman, you want to get a talisman that has at least weakness exploit level 2 on it and at least a tier 2 decoration slot so you can get a point in crit boost. The other skills on the talisman are optional. As for my weapon, I'm using the Avidia Gambit which is the Naga Kuga heavy bowgun. Now the weapon shown in this video is a higher level than what you may have when you're going through the game for the first time but even the lower level Naga Kuga weaponry should give you a similar outcome with maybe a little bit less damage. The main reason we're using the Naga Kuga weapon here is because of how effectively it can use piercing ammunition, requiring very few skills to make it work effectively. The downside of this is of course we have to put up with the low raw attack that the Naga Kuga weaponry has, but it's a trade off that makes this build comfortable for me. Anyway. As for the Rampage slot, you only have a tier 1 decoration, so go with something like Spirit Bird Double. It's really down to personal preference. Now, as for the decorations, there are a few you definitely need. First of all, I've gone for Tenderizer decorations to max out Weakness Exploit, Critical Jewels to max out Crit Boost, Absorber Jewels for a point in Recoil Down, Recovery Jewels, which are optional in all honesty, for Recovery Speed, Quick Load Jewels for a point in Reload Speed, a Jumping Jewel for a point in Evade Extender, Brace Jewel for a point in Flinch Free, and then Steadfast Jewels for points in Stun Resistance. So a right mixed bag there. Some of you may be wondering why I haven't put more Absorber or Quick Load Jewels into this build. Well, it's because the Naga Kuga weaponry has such low recoil and quick reload time already, it means we could use other decorations. So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 420 raw attack with 30% base affinity. This can easily be 80% when you take into account weakness exploit. As for the bowgun modification, I've gone for a power barrel over the shield mod for more damage, and we'll talk about that more later when we get to the skills. You'll also have an okay defense of 661 that is strong against every element except for ice. As for the switch skills, with this build I would say they are down to personal preference. So when it comes to the skills, first of all you have Weakness Exploit at level 3. Weakness Exploit is a skill that increases our affinity whenever we hit monster weak points. Weakness Exploit at level 3 can potentially provide us a bonus 50% extra affinity. You also have Ballistics at level 3 which extends the range at which ammo and arrows have their maximum power. You'll then have Normal Up which increases the damage of normal ammunition. So if you don't like piercing ammunition or you're fighting a monster where piercing ammo isn't favorable, you can switch over to normal ammo and still deal quite a bit of damage. You also have pierce up at level three, increasing the damage of piercing ammunition. You also have spread up at level three as well, increasing the damage of spread ammunition, which means that this build can also work with weapons that specialize in spread ammo, although you may need to edit some of the decorations in order to make spread bowguns work. You'll then have recovery speed at level 3, an optional skill and result of our decorations. Basically this increases how quickly we regain the red portion of health on our health bar after we've taken a hit. 
You'll have stun resistance at level 3, negating all stun effects on a hunter. You'll then have crit boost at level 2. It would have been nice to get this to level 3, but crit boost at level 2 still increases the damage quite significantly of our attacks when they crit a monster, but this only applies to the raw portion of an attack, not the elemental or ailment portion. You'll then have Steadiness at level 2, which suppresses the deviation of bowgun shots, so they are more accurate. You'll then have Evade Extender at level 2, increasing the distance at which we evade and roll, and this is definitely useful when it comes to the heavy bowgun, as it allows us to roll out of the way of incoming attacks. This also means that we don't necessarily always have to take a shield as our bowgun modification. We also have Tune-Up at level 2, which increases the stats of the custom mods attached to the bowgun. For example, at level 1, if we have the shield mod on the heavy bowgun, it increases how effective it is. Or if we have the power barrel, it increases how effective that is. If neither are attached, then it gives us plus 1 reload speed as well as plus 1 steadiness. You'll also have Slugger at level 1, which increases the knockout potential of our attacks. This is a byproduct of the talisman. You wouldn't necessarily have this skill on your build. You'll then have reload speed at level 1, which increases how quickly we can reload the ammo. If we want to use piercing ammo level 3, we definitely needed a point in reload speed. Same with recoil down, which is at level 1, which reduces the recoil when firing the bowguns. And then finally, you'll have flinch free at level 1, which is a skill that reduces knockback from monsters and especially our allies. So there we have it, that is the budget piercing build for the heavy bowgun. But every build out there has various pros and cons. No build is absolutely perfect. When it comes to this build, its biggest pro is its versatility. It's able to use pretty much any ammunition type the bowgun has available to it. Whether it's spread ammo, normal ammo, or piercing ammo, it can make use of all of them. Of course, if you do switch over from piercing or normal, you may have to edit some of the decorations and increase the amount of absorber jewels or quick load jewels you have in the build, but there is room to play around. On top of that, this build is still decent at dealing damage. Obviously, this is partly thanks to the bowgun hitting as hard as it can, but you should still be able to bring down monsters quickly. And on top of that, this build can be used against pretty much any monster in the game. Whilst yes, this build specifically shown here specializes in piercing ammo, which means that it may struggle a little bit against smaller monsters as they have fewer hit zones, it nonetheless is a build that can be taken against any monster because it doesn't have to worry about a monster's elemental or ailment resistances. But of course, there are cons. One of the biggest cons for this build is it is slightly lacking when it comes to raw attack. This is counted slightly thanks to the actual ammo specific skills such as pierce up, or normal up or spread up but for the most part it does lack a little bit when it comes to raw attack skills like attack boost and such and the other con is we are not using the shield mod in exchange for not using the shield mod we are obviously dealing more damage but not having that ability to block incoming attacks can be risky of course we have alleviated this slightly thanks to evade extender so it shouldn't matter too much but still it's a con that i wanted to note but regardless if you're looking for a damage dealing heavy bowgun build that can take you through the game and take on monsters quite comfortably, I'd recommend this one. Especially if you enjoy using piercing ammunition. Of course though it can use all the other primary ammo types such as normal and spread, making this build highly versatile and one I'd recommend. But of course there's more than one budget build out there, there are loads of builds that you can use. And this second build for the heavy bowgun is more of a survival 4 set heavy bowgun build giving us a comfortable build that specializes in sticky ammunition over the other ammo types. It's an explosive build with a lot of defense and quality of life. So for this survival four set build, you'll need the four Basil Geese set, which includes the Basil Geese Helm X, Mail X, Braces X, Coil X, and Greaves X. For my Petalace, I'm using the Absolute Petalace again for some extra health. And then for your Talisman, you'll want to go for a Talisman that can get at least Spare Shot to level 3, whether that be through the skills or through the decoration slots. The Talisman I'm using here is kind of a God Talisman as it does have maximum Quick Sheave on it as well, but you'll want to focus on Spare Shot above the other skills on it. As for my weapon, I'm using the Rajang Cyclone, which is the Rajang Heavy Bowgun. The one shown here, of course, is at the absolute highest level. Yours may be a lower level, but you should still have similar results. As for the Rampage skill, go for one of the anti-species decorations to give you something like Thanged Wyvern Exploit or Wyvern Exploit, something like that. Now, as for the decorations, there are a few mandatory ones here to make this build work. 
First of all, you need to take some absorber jaws to max out recoil down. I've then gone for jumping jaws for points in evade extender, quick load jaws to max out reload speed, and then a thrift jaw to max out spare shot. This build unfortunately needs a lot of those bowgun skills, so you can fire the sticky free ammo, which is gonna be our primary ammo type effectively and efficiently. So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with a raw attack of 390, with minus 20% affinity, but this doesn't matter as we're using sticky ammunition, and sticky ammunition cannot crit, it deals fixed damage based on your attack, as well as certain skills. We're also using the shield modification on this build, so we can block incoming attacks, and you'll have a very strong defense of 741, that is strong against fire and water, but unfortunately weak to the other elements. As for the switch skills, these are kind of down to personal preference, but I will recommend taking charge shot for our sticky ammunition to increase the damage of the sticky explosions and to help with our ammo supply issues that we may have. So as for the skills, first of all you have Agitator at level 5. Agitator is a skill that kicks in whenever a monster becomes enraged, increasing the raw attack of the build as well as the affinity. But the affinity side of this doesn't really matter. You'll then have Guard at level 5, increasing how effectively we can block monster attacks, reducing the knockback from those attacks as well as the amount of stamina required to block those said attacks. This definitely helps when it comes to our survivability. You'll then have Razor Sharp at level 3, which is a byproduct of the armor. It's not needed on this build whatsoever. It basically reduces or prevents sharpness loss, which is wasted on the bowgun. You'll then have Spare Shot at level 3, which is a skill that gives us a chance at not consuming a bullet when we fire the weapon, helping conserve our ammo supply. You'll then have Guard up at level 3, which allows us to block unblockable attacks and also reduces the damage of blocking those attacks as well. You'll then have Quick Sheave at level 3, which is a byproduct of the talisman I'm using. You may not have it, but allows us to sheath the heavy bowgun really quickly. You'll then have Artillery at level 3, increasing the damage of our sticky ammunitions, the explosion part anyway. You'll then have Reload Speed at level 3, increasing how quickly we can reload, which is kind of needed when we're using Sticky Freeze. You'll then have Recoil Down at level 3, reducing the recoil of the weapon when we fire the Sticky Freeze. Again, we need this at level 3. You'll then also have Evade Extender at level 3, increasing the distance at which we can roll and dodge, adding to our survivability and quality of life, countering that slow movement that the Heavy Bowgun has. And then you'll also have Load Shells at level 2. Not really needed on this build, it's a byproduct of the armor as it really only helps the Gun Lance and Charge Blade. So there you have it. As you can see, it's quite a comfortable build, but even this one has various pros and cons. Its biggest pro is its survivability able to take on monsters quite comfortably thanks to all the points it has in guard, guard up and more. The massive shield also allows us to block pretty much any attack we may come across, keeping us in the fight. And if we're not confident in blocking that attack, which to be honest, with the amount of points we have in guard and guard up, rarely will this be the case, we also have maxed out evade extender to get out of the way of incoming attacks. The other pro is that this build still has decent damage output. It's not the highest out there, but thanks to sticky ammo dealing fixed damage, it means we're still able to bring down monsters in a decent amount of time, regardless of where the sticky ammunition hits a monster. And finally, once again, this build is designed to be used against pretty much any monster. Like I said, sticky ammo will deal fixed damage regardless of what body part it hits, which means that it also doesn't really need to worry about a monster's elemental or ailment resistances. There are, of course, a few other pros. For example, sticky ammo can knock out monster crowd controlling them, but these are the main ones that I wanted to point out. But of course, there are cons. One of the biggest cons for this build is unfortunately, Whilst it still can deal decent damage, this build will suffer if you want to use other ammo types as we have negative affinity. And the other con is there may be ammo supply issues, meaning that you have to go back to camp and restock your ammunition. You'll also have to craft ammo during a hunt, during a fight via your radio menu as you only have the ability to carry a small amount of sticky ammo with you. This means that you have to carry the raw material for creating sticky ammo in your item pouch. So you need your gunpowder free as well as your blast nuts. And this can be a put off for some players. But if you can get past that, then you'll have a very comfortable build in your hands. And if you're looking for survivability in your heavy bowgun build, I would definitely recommend this, especially if you're struggling getting through the Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak story. So there we have it, those are the budget builds that I'd recommend for the Heavy Bowgun. Of course, these are just suggestions. There are multiple ways to play the game and you can always customize these builds to whatever you prefer or whatever suits you personally. No build in Monster Hunter should be seen as absolute 
concrete and the only way to play. So I hope these builds will help you out. And until next time, I've been Darblade, bringing you more full set budget builds for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like for more.